Hello everybody. This is going to be a video on how I wind my coils. It's probably going to take multiple uh, of videos be broken up into parts because it'll be rather long, I suspect. Uh, the first thing I would want to do is show you um, the coil winder that I made. Um, this table was something I made from way back when. That's this part right here. And uh, here's the actual coil winder. I've got my hands on both sides of it. I've got it uh, clamped down to a table, and you can see some spools of wire in here on a um, copper uh, rod uh, that looks like half-inch copper rod, and that's where I put my wire feeds there. This is a string feed. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. It uh, gives me an idea how, how how long or how much how much footage I'm winding up on the coil. Um, this thing comes out. And this is the winder. The wires wrap up in here, and I can adjust this. I generally make this about two inches, this little gap here between my two fingers. And this is where I wind the string up. So when I run out of string, I know I've gone the length of uh, wire that I wanted to uh, make the coil out of. Uh, this, this hole, this, the, uh, this right here that I'm pointing to, this plastic, this is a PVC six inch uh, coupling. Um, that I bought at uh, Home Depot. It was just about the right size. I cut out some uh, circular round uh, three-quarter inch pine, put them in as stoppers, gave me a place to mount an axle through. I did it on both sides. Oops, I'll have to go pick that up shortly. Um, these guys here, these are of course the edge guides, and they slide, and what I do is I just rubber band them together. Here's one that's permanently on. I, I never changed that one and I, I rubber band these together. This here is a uh, C-clamp. I hope I'm showing it to you okay. This here is a C-clamp and I mount that against the stop after I rub. And that, uh, that stops the, as I'm winding the coil from the wire pushing this out wider because I, I keep this about two inches like I said. Um, I don't have any uh, real problem with this. A couple of elastics going around and around and around hold this together and I I put my string in here that I wind up when I'm winding the wire. Okay, so this thing just fits down in here. I drop the piece. I'll get it in a few minutes. And these just boom. I really don't use the, um, put it on both sides, really don't use the hand crank. I pretty much do it this way. Hand crank, uh, I can't, I have to guide these wires in here by hand. So I'm standing up here for about 15 minutes or so while I'm feeding the wires and making sure that they they run into the gap. Okay, uh, that's an introduction to the coil winder. And now I'm going to change the wire that I'm going to use to wind. This wire here that I'm pointing to was uh, from the last monocoil wire that I, I wrapped. Uh, the only difference between the monocoil wire and the bifiller is that the monocoil is obviously one, one wire just wrapped continuously and the bifuller I run an 18 gauge wire along with it and the 18 gauge gets wrapped here and the reason why I use a lighter gauge is that um, the inductance of a coil doesn't matter uh, very much on the wire thickness and um, a lighter gauge allows me to get the coil into a reasonably compact size and I need 12 gauge because I use these coils for two things. I use them for either magnetic wave delivery devices or a PEMF. And all that information is been pretty well defined on my uh, website in my setups and uh, demonstration videos. So I'm going to stop this um, and I'm going to prepare uh, another video that will show you how I actually switch these things and get, get everything set up before I start winding. Okay. Uh, that'll be the end of video one. All right, I am now going to do video two. You can hear my voice. You can't see any action yet. I'm walking around uh, the computer setup and so forth. And the first thing I need to do is to remove this coil and replace it with, uh, not coil, but spool, and replace it with two spools that I'm going to be using to wind a bifiller coil. Like I said, this last spool was used to wind a uh, mono. So I simply slide the dowel back, 
And obviously it's pretty simple. I just take off the spool that I had on there. And we'll put this on the floor out of the way. And then I put the spools that I want on there and I feed them a certain way. I always, I always have the wire coming off the top. And I want that one on next. And then here is the 12 gauge that I'm going to be working with. I'll put that on next. There we go. Okay, I got to reach. I know you can't see much because I'm in the way now. Okay, so I have these uh, spacers right here that I use to take up the extra space. I don't want the I don't want these spools traveling around um, back and forth. So I use spacers where I can, and I need something about. Okay, I'll just use the one spacer. It can travel back and forth a little bit. I just don't want them taking way off and getting way out of range. Okay, so now I have the wires, spools mounted. Excuse me. I know you can't see again. I'm in the way. There we go. And the next thing I do is I'll thread them onto here, and I'll show you how to do that. So this will be the end of this video. They might be all linked together, and I might condense everything down to a couple of videos. But Okay, that'll be it for here. Or for now.